in this presentation I will talk about the test of difference between the means of three normal populations let us assume that there are these three populations each one has a normal distribution and the standard deviation of the populations are the same however we have treated them with different treatments for example we may have given them different types of drugs or the three populations have been using different types of media and we want to know if these different treatments have caused the mean of these three populations to be different or not but we have to make this judgment based on three samples that we take from these three populations if we see a big difference in the sample means of the three samples that would be an indicator that maybe the population means have changed as a result of the treatments they got so we have a hypothesis that says the differences that we observe in sample means is the result of sampling variability and is accidental and in fact the population means mu1 mu2 and mu3 in fact have remained equal the other hypothesis says that no the differences that we are observing in sample means are not accidental and they are a representation of the fact that the mean of the populations have changed as a result of the treatments and that's the reason that we see the differences in sample means if we divide a measure of bias between groups by a measure of the difference within groups as a result of sampling variability that would be a good measure for the test of the hypothesis because if the treatments have really changed something in these three populations then there would be a major difference a bias between different groups and when we divide it by the random variations that normally happens in a sampling process that should give us a big fraction let's assume that in the first sample we have five observations in the second sample we have four observations and the third sample we have five observations and in total we have 14 observations and the mean of all of the 14 observations is x all bar or x t bar we will use x1 bar as their representative we have to subtract x1 bar from x t bar once x1 bar from x t bar twice x1 bar from x t bar three times and because the first sample has five observation in it we we use x1 bar as their representative and we will subtract the mean of this sample from xt bar five times now here you see the bias of group two is calculated by subtracting x2 bar from xt bar and squaring it then subtracting it x2 bar from xt bar and squaring it and uh, we did this four times so this measure of bias of group two would be the square of the difference of the mean of sample 2 from the mean total which is done four times because each time it is used as a representative of one of these four uh, observations for the denominator which we needed a measure of random variation within groups or a measure of error random error uh, we would sum the squared error or the difference of each observation from the mean of its own group which happens as a result of sampling variability so look at this in in this group we see observations x1 x2 x3 x4 and they are different than their mean because we are not expecting them to be identical to their mean and they have a little bit of random variation of course so what would we do to calculate this measure of error or random variation is that we would subtract each observation from the mean of its own sample 
and we would square it. So this is the squared deviation of the first observation in sample 1. This is the squared deviation of the second observation in sample 1. And this is the squared deviation of our last observation from the mean of the third sample. Here is the statistic proposal. Let's calculate the sum of the squared deviation of the mean of each group from the mean of the total and divide it by its degree of freedom, which is the number of the groups minus one, and calculate some of the squared deviation of each observation from the mean of its own group, which was a measure of random variation, and divide it by the degree of freedom of itself, which is the number of observations minus the number of groups, and use this one as our statistic. We have to subtract the mean of the first sample from the mean of the total and square it in one times and the deviation of the mean of the second sample from the mean of the total squared in two times divided by the degree of freedom of these three means of the three samples which is three minus one and that's because the mean of the total is a known value. And the denominator is the deviation of each observation in sample 1 squared, the deviation of each observation in sample 2 squared, and so forth, divided by total number of observations minus 3. And we subtract 3 because the three means of the three samples are known. It turns out that the expected value of the numerator is the variance of the population plus something that is related to the deviation of mean of each subpopulation from the mean of all of the members of the populations. And the expected value of the denominator is the variance of all of the members of the three populations. However, if the null hypothesis is true, then the mean of the three subpopulations would be identical and would be equal to the mean of overall mean of all of the members of the population. And this term in the numerator would be zero. Therefore, it is expected that when the null hypothesis is correct, both numerator and denominator would be close to each other, um, and the proposed statistic would be close to one. It can be shown that if we accept the null hypothesis, the proposed statistic has a f distribution with a mean that is very close to 1 if the number of observations in our sampling is relatively big. If the three population means are identical, then the distribution of the statistic will be an f distribution with a mean around 1 which makes the chance of uh, f statistics very much bigger than 1 very small. We can calculate the chance of an f statistic, which would be the area uh, under this curve. So, for example, if we see the f statistic is something like 4, that means that the chance of this area bigger than 4 or 4 is very minimal. The conclusion is that if the null hypothesis is correct and the treatment has had no effect and the mean of the three subpopulations has remained equal, when we take three samples and we calculate F, the chance of a big F, our statistic, to happen is very low. If a big F happens, we accept that maybe the three populations are not equal the mean of the three populations as the result of the treatment may have changed.